In this video, we're going to look at the problem with nested conditionals, and how to refactor them so they're clearer and easier to understand. Let's start with this example, where we're processing a file upload. The first thing we're doing is checking that no error has occurred, then we check the file size, and then the type of the file. If all of these checks pass, we then call the moveUploadedFile function. If any of these checks fail, we throw an exception. For example, in the else for the first if statement, we just throw a new exception with a simple message. If the file size is too large, we throw an exception saying the file is too large. And if the file type is not a PNG, we throw an exception saying invalid file type. The problem with this code is that it's difficult to follow. At first glance, you can't see what condition causes which exception to be thrown. Which if statement is this else attached to? Excessive nesting of conditionals like this is known as arrow code, as the shape of the indented code forms an arrow shape. This makes it easy to spot in your code. Let's refactor this code so it's more readable. First, let's make a copy of this file. So we can compare the two files when we've done. To refactor code like this, we reverse the condition and then move the else code into the if block. To start, let's change this equality operator into a negative one. Then we can move the line containing the exception to inside this if block. We don't need to have an else, as throwing the exception will exit from the code. This is known as a guard clause. Let's do the same for the next condition. We can now remove the indentation, reverse the operator, and move the exception line to inside the if block. The same with the next condition. We reverse the comparison and move the exception line. And finally, we can remove the indentation on here and remove the remains of the else statements. This code does exactly what it did before but now it's much more readable. Let's compare it to the original. And as you can see, we've removed all this indentation and the refactored code is much clearer and therefore much easier to maintain. This was an example with exceptions. Let's have a look at another example, this time with various return statements. Here we have a function where we're checking password strength. We're checking the length is longer than seven characters, that it contains at least one number, at least one lowercase letter, and at least one uppercase letter. If all this passes, we return null. If any of these don't pass, we return a relevant error message. As you can see, the indentation on this code forms an arrow and we have the same problem as before of knowing which condition causes each different message to be returned. Let's use the same technique to refactor this code. First, let's duplicate this file. And then let's start by reversing the first condition. Greater than seven is less than eight and then we can move the return line from the else into this if block. Then let's reverse the next condition. And move the return. The same with the next one. And the 
final one. Then at the end, if we reach this point, all the validation tests have passed, so we simply return null as before. And we can remove the remains of all these else statements. Again, it's much clearer what's going on now, and if we compare this to the original code, we can see that we've even made it shorter. So whenever you have excessive nesting of conditionals like this, which you can spot from the arrow shape, you can refactor it by reversing each conditional to lose the level of indentation, and by having early returns or throws to make it much more readable. Links to the code shown in this video are below.